Hi, my name is Alfago Gutierrez from Cisco ACI Tag Team. Today, I want to show you what a VCNE contract is and how to configure it. Endpoint groups are logical groups of hosts or servers, typically called endpoints. Endpoints in the same EPG are allowed to communicate between each other by default. However, endpoints at different EPGs cannot communicate unless it is explicitly permitted. In some circumstances, all the EPGs associated to the same VRF could communicate each other without any restriction. To achieve that, you have some options like changing the control enforcement preference to unenforced. Other option is to include all the EPGs you would like to communicate to be included on a preferred group member at the VRF. There is also another way to allow this communication, and it's called VCN. A VCN is an object that represents all EPGs within a VRF instance that includes external EPGs of a layer throughout that belong to the same VRF. It has the capability to associate them with one or more contracts and not create separate contract relationships for each EPG. It can be used as provider, consumer, or both. This is also known as a EPG collection. When a VCN provides or consumes a contract, it is equivalent to have all EPGs in a VRF to provide or consume the contract one by one. It is helpful when you add a new EPG to a VRF. There is no need to place a new contract between the EPGs. Whenever the EPG is added, the VCN contract rules are automatically applied. One of the advantages of VCN is that simplifies the configuration. Also, when it's required, it can optimize the ticket resources on the leaf switches. When an individual contract is applied, it consumes ticket entries specific to each pair of EPGs. However, when a VCN is created, it reuses the ticket entries for every EPG placed on the VRF, consuming just one entry. The size of the ticket depends on the hardware of each leaf switch. You can check the capacity at Navigate to Operations, Capacity Dashboard. Leaf capacity, policy cap. This image shows how a contract must work between different EPGs with multiple consumers and multiple providers in the same VRF without a VCN. This is represented by two rules used per EPG. You can use two rules applied between the same number of multiple consumers and providers, and then you just apply it at the EPG collection. This will work with a contract VCN to VCN from 0 to 0. This simplifies the configuration and optimizes the resources on TCAM. The next diagram shows a configuration example in where EPG test communicates to all EPGs on the VCN with a VCN to EPG contract from 0 to a specific EPG test class ID. This with a subject that permits the ICMP communication. To create a contract VCN, navigate to the tenant laboratory, contracts, standard, right click and select create contract with these settings. Name VCN, scope via ref, subject, click on the plus icon and create a contract subject. Name subject, filters, Click on the plus icon and add an ICMP filter with permit action. Then submit. Add the contract as a consumer in the VCNE for the VRF lab. Navigate to tenant, networking, VRFs, lab, EPG collection for VRF, consumed contracts. In consumed contracts, Click on the plus icon and create a contract subject. Next, add the contract as a provider in the EPG test. Navigate to Tenant, Application Profiles, Application EPGs, EPG Test, Contracts. Then right click and select Add Provided Contract. Choose the contract that was created. Then Submit. In case you want to validate, you can check with the help of the PC tag and VRF scope how the contract it is applied. In order to check the PC tags, you can navigate to Tenant, 
laboratory, application profiles, and check class ID. EPG test, that is the provider, has the PC tag. In order to check the VRF scope, you can navigate to tenant, networking, VRF, and check the segment. VRF lab has a scope. Then at the CLI, you can check the next comments. In where zero represents how the VCNE contract applies for all the APGs that are inside the VRF with the scope in both ways as a consumer and provider. Next, you can see that the contract has a filter ID that you associate with the subject and with the permit action. This filter is permitting the ICMP traffic. And with that, the communication between two different EPGs using a DCNE contract is allowed. Thank you for watching.